Okay, welcome. Giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem Wakar Kodash. I want to give double honors to the elders of apostles of Great Millstone and Shalom to the sincere believers of Yahweh Shah. So, this video, well, the inspiration of this video was drawn from a video which I'm gonna play in a, in a few. And it displays Esau studying uh, the last couple seconds of a dying brain. And the thing with Esau is, Esau is not a spiritual being. He's a carnal being. And he doesn't understand how the spirit works. And the reason he wants to learn how to keep a brain alive because he really want to tap into immortality because deep down inside Esau he's scared of death of death because he doesn't know what's on the other side so um, I'm going to play the video For the first time ever, T in an 87-year-old patient who had been connected this time ever, scientists have recorded the activity of a dying human brain, discovering that it showed the same patterns as seen during dreaming, memory recall and meditation, a new study has revealed. Findings published in journal Frontiers in Aging Neuroscience on Tuesday showed the recording of the activity in an 87-year-old patient who had been connected to an electroencephalography EEG machine to detect seizures and treat the patient when he suddenly had a heart attack and passed away. The 900 seconds of brain activity that were measured around the time of the patient's death were described as being similar to life recall. The experience, which has been likened to what happens around a near-death experience, potentially answers a question about brain activity in these moments which has puzzled neuroscientists. Through generating oscillations involved in memory retrieval, the brain may be playing a last recall of important life events just before we die, Dr. Ajmal Zemar, a neurosurgeon at the University of Louisville in the US, who organized the study, said. Researchers indicated that the findings could mean that the brain remains active and coordinated as the individual passes away, and even after their death. Zemar added that these findings challenge our understanding of when exactly life ends and generate important subsequent questions, such as those related to the timing of organ donation. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so let's start with... um. Ecclesiastes um, verse well chapter 8 verse 6 it says because to every purpose there is a time in judgment therefore the misery of a man is great upon him <coughs> for he knoweth not that which should be for who can tell him when it should be there is no man to have power over the spirit to retain the spirit neither have the power neither have he power in the day of death so when a person time when is a person time to go that's it you can't you can't borrow a second a minute a day a month when the lord says your time it's your time But Esau, he doesn't believe in the Most High. And he's not a spiritual being. He thinks he can reverse that and stop death. And it says, and there is no discharge in that war. Neither should the wickedness deliver those that are given to it. So you can't war against the spirit and just say, you know what? I'm just... I'm just going to stand right here and stop my my soul, my spirit from departing from my body. 
That's impossible. Now, um, let's go to Psalms 64 and 5. They encourage themselves in an the evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say who succeed them. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. And, and that's what Esau will do. Esau, he searched things out. He gave his due diligence to find out the matter of a thing. But what Esau doesn't understand that wisdom, knowledge, and understanding comes from the most high. So it says, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Because Esau wanted to figure it out. And let's let's say if he was able to figure that out, es Esau will release all type of wickedness. <coughs> Excuse me. Esau will unleash all type of wickedness. Now, Esau already in his court system will give a man double life or triple life, which he's not able to live. But if Esau was able to get the ability to keep a, a, a person's soul in their body, he will actually make a person live out that time. Because this man is unmerciful. Now let's go to Proverbs um, 2 and 6. For the Lord giveth wisdom. So who giveth wisdom? The Lord, Yahweh. Now it says, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Now it says, he live of sounds wisdom for the righteous. So the, the Lord did give the wisdom to Esau for his own destruction. But the Most High is only dealing with the righteous. And when we get into the kingdom, the Lord is going to reveal unto us beyond measure that things that we're not able to comprehend today. So it says he laid up, he laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He's a block, he's a buckler to them that walk uprightly. All right. Um, matter of fact, let me go um, open up a new tab. Um. Now, this is the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, and verse 1. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious. And in the tenth, I'm sorry, in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. But we are born at all adventure. And we should be hereafter as though we have never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart. Um, which being extinguished, our body should be turned into ashes and our spirit should vanish as as the soft air and our name should be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in, in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof for our time is as weary shadow that passeth away and after our end there is no returning see that's how Esau this is how he thinks cause he in his mind he figured that well he believes 
You know, we only have one life to live. And it says, um, and and after I will end, there is no returning. For if for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. And that's how you think. He don't he don't understand he doesn't understand the spiritual world. He doesn't understand reincarnation. That's why Esau do the things he does. Um go to first Corinthians three and eighteen. Let no man deceive himself. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, Let no man deceive himself if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world let him become a fool that he may be wise for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the most high for it is written he taketh the he taketh the wise and their own craftiness because um at this point esau wanted to bring about uh total um extermination of the lord's people but that's gonna fall upon his own head and then everything that they least are planning right now to bring about the new world disorder the most High just using them to fulfill prophecy So the most I just using them to fulfill prophecy. Because all Esau is is pawns on the most high chessboard. So it says he take up the wise and the own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thought of the wise that they are vain. And the most high sitting in the heavens is laughing at Esau because Esau he's not gonna prosper. Because in Esau's mind with the lead of Esau they have this master plan on global domination which is going to fail because the only global domination that's going to um, come on the earth is the rulership of Yahweh Shah which the elected joint is with Yahweh Shah so now I'm going to close with Isaiah 48 and 16 now it says come ye near unto me hear this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am i and the and now the lord yahweh in his spirit has sent me uh so like this scripture ain't supposed to be here this, this, yeah this is not supposed to like you so i'll just close with that So with that, I'm going to say all oh, praises and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Vokak Wadash, Shalom.